uh, hi everyone uh, sorry for the slight delay there was some issue uh, with my system i had to restart my pc again uh, so last time round i think in the last class what we so i mean in the class preceding that we done that we done one of the questions um on pensions last time around we looked at a life insurance based question although we ended up identifying that you know most of the questions were there were not related to life insurance sadly but they were mostly uh investment related and even from that perspective it was mostly real estate investment and mortgage and loan related question uh but those unique questions have been asked in the past and uh, should have given you a decent enough idea about how to prepare yourselves uh you know with the kind of questions that have uh, come historically uh next up let's just look at one of the case studies uh that is based on general insurance allow me just a moment while i open up the book uh, yeah, and yeah, I mean, of course, goes without saying if you guys have any questions about anything that you have done uh, so far or in the last couple of classes, we'd be happy to address that. Uh, let me know once you can see my screen. I think it should be visible. Perfect. Yeah, this is the question that we did uh, last time around, September 2019, question number two. Uh, this was for more than 50. This is actually 60. The questions were bifurcated in 40, 60. Uh, the other question, although it is related to your general insurance, but coverage for GI being lower, I'm just seeing that you know, if there's something else we can probably look at, which is a better coverage from GI perspective, uh, we could probably have a look at that. Otherwise, of course, that's the question that uh, we're going to go uh, forward with. Company B is well developed the sophisticated markets and financial institutions uh, reports. This is not GI. Yeah, I think that 40 mark question is the only, uh, you know, I mean, at least the underlying question is based on a general insurance company. So I just look at that one and then incrementally while going ahead, if you can look at something else, we'll definitely be doing that as well. So without wasting a lot of time, let's just look at what this question says. So XYZ, we're looking at this question number 30, September 2019, question number one. So background, uh, yeah, you guys can see it. Perfect. So background is given that uh, XYZ is a general insurance company in a developed country specializing in motor insurance. So there's a GI, uh, the company, the, the country is a developed one. So we have to take note of that. And on top of that, they specialize mostly in motor insurance. It has been one of the market leaders by market share for 10 years. Over the past 10 years, it has been one of the market leaders, which means their penetration has been superb. However, it has not made profit in the last two years. So the last, the last couple of years have in particular been mad an overseas insurance company uh which goes by the name of abc corporation is looking to purchase xyz and has been provided with the following information so abc which is an overseas insurance company they are looking to purchase xyz probably because they might be thinking that you know given that this it's not made profit in the last two years it might not be seen as that good an asset and once you know whenever that happens you uh, you always are able to get a uh, bargain deal. Uh, so that's that's the case over here. So, and this is the information that has been provided. So motor insurance results. 
an initial analysis of xyz claims experience show that overall claim numbers over the last two years have increased by 20 percent in particular there has been significant increase in the number uh, in the claim connected to car and motorcycle accident so there has been a uh, upward increase in the claim number over the last two years the increase has been by more than about 20 percent and in particular there has been a large number of claims which are connected to car and motorcycle accidents so there have been a lot of accidents that have happened in the past couple of years we'll have to analyze or we'll have to figure out if, if it is provided already within the uh, question as to what is the reason behind that uh but once we but yeah but once we have pointed it down to uh we basically understood the reason why they made losses was basically because of the fact that uh there's been increase in the claim and, and there's been a sharp increase in the claim by about 20 percent then the company retirement benefits claims okay and like i mentioned you know earlier pension used to be their favorite uh uh go-to questions because no matter what they would they would eventually end up asking uh question on pension it's relatively easier to ask question on risk because risk is something you can include anywhere risk investment is includable everywhere but uh, sadly they kind of include pensions uh, everywhere and they end up asking you questions so let's just uh, have a look at what they've mentioned in terms of pension for this company so the retirement benefit scheme goes as follows they have two retirement benefit schemes a defined benefit scheme and a defined contribution scheme those are the two schemes that we have five years ago the db scheme closed to future services members of that scheme joined the defined contribution scheme in respect of the future services so five years ago future accrual of benefits start for db and all of those people in order to accrue their future benefit they join the dc scheme wherein both of them have to make a certain contribution and the amount we receive at the end is uncertain three years ago xyz agreed to make annual payments into the defined benefit scheme for the following 10 years to eliminate the funding deficit deficit so obviously it appears that at that particular point of time they might have had a funding deficit in order to make sure that the funding deficit can be taken care of uh, they have decided to make an annual payment of X of whatever amount for the next 10 years. However, recent results suggest that the deficit has increased, indicating that XYZ may be required to increase its payment into the DB scheme. So they were planning that over the next 10 years, we'll provide some of our surplus over there. And once you have done that, the gap will uh, shorten. Instead of that, the gap is widened even more as a result of which the overall liabilities for them have increased uh, substantially. So in the DB scheme, uh, they are even, they, they, their shortfall has even increased uh, further than where it was a couple of years back. The defined contribution scheme is a with profit managed by a life insurance company, uh, which provides investment and admin services. The policy guarantees a minimum investment return of 3% per annum on funds investment on funds invested before the retirement xyz matches employee contribution in the scheme up to a maximum of five percent of salary so the contribution is around is, is fixed at around five percent uh xyz is supposed to do a maximum of five percent not beyond that and the policy guarantees a minimum investment return of three percent per annum so this is like the benchmark uh rate that has been provided over here in the other information we have been given that you have also been provided with the following information xyz ran a, ran a promotional uh, campaign last year to increase the number of motor insurance policies sold to young people between the age of 18 to 24 so they have kind of uh hit themselves very hard with this i think they have ended up selling a lot of insurance they, they ended up spending a lot in order to attract the market between 18 to 24 and this is probably the sort of people who are most susceptible to uh, getting, uh, uh, you know, motor and car insurance uh, accidents. Next up, from the next year, the government is introducing a legislation which will require all pension scheme deficits to be eliminated within the next five years. Which means mandatorily, whatever deficit has been there, it has to be. Uh, uh, is that? Uh, uh, Utsa, can you please go on mute? There's some, uh, there's, a, there's a little background uh, noise that's coming at you. Thanks. Uh, so the next one is that uh, from the next year, the government is introducing a legislation which will require all the pension scheme funding deficits to be eliminated within five years. Earlier, they had themselves, I think, voluntarily uh, supported this idea of fixing the deficit in the next 10 years. Given the fact that there's a government regulation which has asked, this is kind of a double whammy on them because they'll have to make sure that 
uh, whatever pension deficits are there within their DB scheme, which widened over the last couple of years, it needs to be funded in the next five years uh, in order to get it at least in a fully funded uh, stage. So this is the entire question. Uh, the question says there's a there's a just a quick recap. XYZ General Insurance Company, they are in developed country. They have been market leader over the past 10 years, but last two years have been unprofitable. Uh, mostly because of two things. One was their motor insurance. Motor insurance claim have give, gone up by 20%. In case of retirement benefit scheme, their DV scheme was at a deficit. So five years ago, they kind of uh, stopped that scheme. And a couple of years back, they started to fund that in order to make sure that the overall funding gap can be reduced. However, the funding gap has increased despite this uh, efforts. And we're going to have to probably figure out why that happened. Uh, on top of that, uh, they, they, they basically have a DC scheme running right now. Last few years, things that have changed substantially are, number one, they ended up inviting people within 18 to 24 to buy insurance from them. Probably this was successful as a result of which their claim experience was far worse off. Uh, they could have probably taken a better underwriting stance or they could have increased the pricing. Not sure if they did that, but we're going to have to, of course, make assumptions while we're writing the answers going forward. And uh, that... That could have been one of the reasons why this happened. And the next one is that no matter what, over the next five years, they'll have to make sure that uh, uh, as required by statute or regulation, they'll have to uh, eliminate all the funding gap that is that is present over there. Now, there are just five questions over here. The marks being allocated is decent is what I'd say. Uh, it's rather on the high end, not 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 if, if not decent. Uh, this is first one, which is around five marks, and then everything is seven to ten marks. So, of course, whenever there's this, you know, uh, 7 to 10 mark related questions, it, the scorability, of course, goes for a toss because over there you have to write a lot. So, let's just look at all the kind of question that they've asked. First of all, they've asked us, set out the reasons why ABC may purchase XYZ. So, uh, investment, why would they want to do this investment at the first place? Uh, I think this is a relatively easier one. Can We can generate decent enough points. Uh, 5 mark skill, it should be a good one. Next up, describe using examples how XYZ can manage and control its risk in connection to the motor insurance policy. So here again, and this is very critical that they have themselves mentioned that you can use examples. So you can use a couple of or maybe two, three anecdotal examples as to how XYZ can manage and control it, its risks in connection with the motor insurance policies that they're selling. And of course, one of the things that we're going to have to look at is the promotional campaign that they're doing over here. Next thing, set out possible reason for the worsening of funding position in the DB scheme. And this is very interesting. I was expecting something like this to come for four or five marks because here you have to just think through and come up with pointers that could have led to this happening. But uh, this has come for 10 marks. So, of course, you'll have to write a lot. But to what extent you're going to structure it is going to be very uh, important in this particular case. Uh, discuss potential option available to improve the funding position of DB scheme. Okay, this is rated and for 8 marks, I think this is okay because there are multiple ways in which you can uh, improve the funding positions, right? So, this is what we're going to look at. That is fine. Next up, uh, discuss the key risk to the defined contribution pensions, uh, pension scheme. In your answer, you should assume on each risk from the perspective of XYZ and the scheme members. So again, this is seven mark, but this is this is interesting because the risk of the contribution scheme is what we have to do. And in the answer, we have to look at risk from the perspective of both the company as well as the scheme members. So one will be risk from the perspective of company, the other one will be risk from the perspective of scheme members. Of course, when we are bifurcating, the number of pointers are obviously going to be much higher. So the last couple of questions seem okay. Uh, I think these are doable. This seven mark question is a good one. This five mark question is a good one. So is this eight mark question. Uh, probably the most difficult one is going to be this because uh, there's only so much that I can think of on an immediate basis when, I, when, I, when I'm uh, trying to figure out an answer to this. And probably the most difficult and, and the other one is, is going to be this because over here we have to use uh, examples as well. So let's just get started. Uh, there are uh, set out reasons why ABC may want to purchase XYZ. So this is a five mark question. Uh, open-ended, uh, of course, you can look at investment wala, uh, area and of course, you have to think about why would someone want to uh, pursue a fate like this. So, ABC, why would they want to purchase XYZ? Of course, we have the background available with us. 
uh, what do you think could be the reasons why ABC would want to purchase XYZ? So five mark question. I don't need the broader answers. If you can just let me know in, in bullet terms, like you know, uh, potential entry into new new country, uh, this new developed country, uh, potential for getting it at a bargain price because uh, you know they they've been unprofitable for the last couple of years. So pointers like those, if you can just generate around five mark question, so maybe uh, uh, six to seven at least good enough pointers. Uh, I'm going to give you guys with around five, six minutes, uh, do share across whatever pointers you can generate on, uh, the first, uh, bit of it. Hey guys, uh, do start sharing across whatever ideas you can think of uh, as to why would they want to uh, purchase XYZ.
okay good enough points so diversification to the new market of course that is one of the critical reasons because you get the benefit of diversification there's economies of scale because what you are trying to purchase is a very uh large company uh on top of that gain data for claims experience for newer products so of course let's just say if they want to get their foot, foot on the door uh, which basically is that you know you've entered that market for once uh you enter with a very large company which is already specializing in motor insurance you can of course foray into other market places as well based on the experience that you already had so it could be a good technique to enter into this market uh use surplus to cover losses of xyz uh tax benefit or something i think that is what you are trying to say because they already have some sort of losses in their books uh whenever there are losses it's a profitable thing because you know the profit that you earn later on gets taxed at a lower rate uh is that what uh, that is what i'm understanding out of this but if there's something else as well we could probably look at that uh diversification of business entering into a new country bargain purchase is a very important point over here because there is a potential for bargain purchase given of the, given the fact that uh they have not really been doing very well over the last couple of years so you can buy a very good company which is a market leader in that country for a bargain price because of the fact that the last couple of years they haven't been good, doing very good so this is more of an opportunistic purchase that they are trying to make uh probably a couple of years back or maybe a couple of years from now uh, when things are better of course they might not want to pursue this uh, venture because uh, then the valuation would be a, a, a challenge but here they can end up getting this for cheaper than what they expect because of the fact that uh, it has been loss making hiring of key personnel so you end up getting just like the foot in the door kind of a thing right you end up getting into a country you get to have the most experienced people working within the insurance country directly hired under your umbrella because of such an acquisition that you are making uh net of gains in the year so as to reduce that okay ha huh, so why tax wala jo benefit hai that you are getting uh market leader has to be profitable to present the current position okay this is again same uh diversification benefit again is 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 a very important one uh expertise to the purchase of abc so they are you can probably expand and get an expertise of uh motor insurance if motor insurance is not already their uh, area of expertise uh they are they yeah i mean they get a very large customer base they get a very large employee base they get a, a foot in the door kind of uh, 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 you know thing when they are trying to enter this uh new market uh, directly so you get a lot of benefits without having to spend a lot uh, so there is diversification and all of that uh this can i mean there are a few other pointers that you can mention but nothing that you guys haven't done already but uh, it it can be like you know using the uh brand that that particular uh a uh, company has you can try to say that you you might be wanting to remove a competitor uh, of the checklist as well um so those are maybe a couple of incremental points but yeah other than that the pointers that you guys have mentioned are uh more or less very uh, good ones next up is probably the uh, or relatively more difficult question so describe using examples how xyz can manage and control its risks so manage and control its risk is what you have to do in connection with this motor insurance policy so of course we don't have to highlight or describe the risk that they're facing you have to identify how they can manage this risk uh, manage this risk and how can they control this risk so the um words here are very important one is risk how can they manage and control the risk so as you may recollect from the chapters that you have learned and this is where you know uh cp1 becomes very uh, tricky in the sense that uh it's difficult to identify on the first reading that this is directly related to uh, something that you guys have might that you guys might have done earlier uh but on a second reading third reading is where you end up getting that there were certain pointers that you could gen- that you could have gen- uh, generated or directly uh taken up so over here at least agar main manage ko hata bhi you know i'm not looking at manage risk control so how can you control the risk in connection with whatever policy is for xyz so this is a direct question from risk control wala uh chapter so uh risk management tools is basically something that we can use over here in order to address those so for instance uh, how can they manage the risk better of course they can do better underwriting even within underwriting you can end up writing pointers like better uh, initial underwriting good claims underwriting uh medical underwriting and all of those things of course they have to be improved in order to make sure that uh the type of risk that you are writing 
is uh, adequate and uh, you're, you're not kind of exposed to a lot of risk. On top of that, uh, yeah, claim underwriting also you mentioned, so yeah, that's, that's fine. Next one would probably be your diversification, right? So you have to get the benefit of diversification. Uh, and there you can mention a few anecdotal examples like, you know, they can diversify into uh, XYZ uh, region. They can do a, a geographical diversification. They can do diversification in terms of entering into other uh, LOBs. So expand uh, over there. Uh, there could be certain LOBs which, uh, you know, end up being cross-functional as a result of which uh, you end up getting the benefits of losses that is made one at, at one of the places via profits that you're making at the other places. So just like we have discussed, right, annuity versus term insurance, these are the exact opposite businesses. So whenever you're selling both, it's a perfect natural hedge uh, that you end up getting into. So diversification gives you that uh, benefit as well. On top of that, you can diversify not just in terms of the business that you're writing, but also in terms of the assets that you have, right? You can diversify into different uh, sort of asset classes. Uh, you can expand into using much more uh, comprehensive asset class for yourself. Uh, so for instance, if let's just say you're doing uh a lot of corporate bonds maybe you might want to shell out uh one or two bips uh, uh here and there but you might want to go for government bonds but of course that decision has to be taken with a lot of caution and this is something that you can mention in the in, in the examination as well uh because of the fact that the last couple of years have been unprofitable so to what extent we want to increase the level of profitability or increase the uh revenue stop line investment income whatever you want to call it uh is again going to be critical but that has to be taken with the consideration to the overall risk that you're writing. So the more you move towards ris riskier assets like uh, real estate or equities, the better off or the higher is the expected risk return going to be. But of course, you're pouring into much more uh, riskier uh, avenues. So that is what I can think from investment perspective. Uh, uh, I think other risk may uh, ART wale items are also something that you can mention. Uh, reinsurance, post-loss funding, those are items they can probably be uh, looked at over here as well. And you can mention examples that, you know, if they're insuring only X, Y, Z, they can insure more. And all of those items can be man, uh, can be mentioned uh, in this question in order to fetch uh, decent enough marks. So what I have thought of so far is underwriting, all the different types of underwriting, better claims management experience, uh, diversification ka benefit, alternative risk transfer, uh, better investment management and all of those items which you can do in order to make sure that you can uh, manage and control the risk in a uh, better way with, with its motor insurance company. So that is risk control. Manage ke liye bhi, there is something that I can think of. I'm not really sure if that's uh, correct, but probably you can uh, look at management controls over here. So manage the risk, right? So there's control. Risk control, ke liye toh, of course, you're going to be using uh, risk management tools. Uh, for management, you can probably look at uh, the management control items. Uh, it's been routine items, na, like uh, you record the data, uh, auditing, accounting, monitoring, and all of those items. You can look at that in order to manage as well, because in order to get an idea of better idea of risk, you can you have to do you have to take those uh, steps as well. So for a ten mark question, you'll have to write a lot. That is of course there. The pointers that I mentioned should probably come to you directly because of the fact that there's a direct question ask ki risk control kaise karega. So the way that you control risk is using those risk control uh, uh, tools. But on top of that, you have to mention examples on each and every pointer that you're generating over there. So that is again going to be a very critical aspect that you're doing. And uh, with all those pointers and within those mentioning, you know, extra, uh, you know, expanding on those points and then mentioning all these examples, uh, you, I, I think you should be able to do fairly well in this uh, type of a question. Next one is an important one. And over here, uh, I'm, I'm expecting you guys to be able to do at least half of it very well. But the remaining half is probably going to be a little challenging in this particular case. So over here, we have been asked that set out possible reasons for the worsening of position in the defined benefit scheme. So DB scheme, and remember that it was closed five years ago it only. A couple of years ago, they identified that the uh, funding position has gone bad and they were trying to uh, fix it in the next 10 years. Next five years, to fix Karnai Padega is required by the law. Now we have to set out the possible reason for the uh, worsening of this position within the DB scheme. So 
this one i'm going to shoot it out to you guys uh 10 mark question i'm going to give you guys around 10 minutes i don't really want uh, you to exp expand the pointers even if you can generate those broad pointers and give a structure to how you're going to address this question uh that should be more than enough so it's 7:32 right now uh in the next 6 7 minutes i'm going to ask you guys if there's any uh if, if there's any question do let me know uh otherwise we'll have a discussion then or maybe 10 10 minutes from now which is let's just say 7:40 is when we uh reconvene and have a discussion on this particular question and just one hint that there's a reason i mentioned that half of it can be done very well because that is something that we have discussed uh, over and over multiple times so half of it to definitely have to do very well the remaining half is probably going to be uh, problematic so there there will figure out what what we can do so i'm i'm just quickly going to go on mute uh, see you after like 5 6 minutes
okay i am starting to get the answers let me just quickly go through what you guys have written so far um uh, okay for funding question okay so dv recover because of the investment provider of the benefit possible reason for worsening of funding position since it's close to new business they are unable to achieve economies of scale in investment or return so as a result of which uh economies of scale in investment or invest in risky assets for higher returns so economies of scale chala gaya when this economies has gone the costs are selling in but right there be certain people who have been hired to manage and everything as a result of which uh there are high expenses but not much returns as a result of which it would have gone down fall in interest rate in the economy leading to lower returns so whenever the interest rate wait fall in the interest rate leading to lower return yeah it can also end up and if 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 at all the asset liability matching is not proper the liabilities are going to increase as well right so with lower interest rate the uh, uh, expected value of both assets and liabilities are going to go up given that there was already a deficit uh, if the interest rate go further down the deficit is going to expand asset or valuation could have been uh, incorrect before or now so that is again you know erroneous uh, uh, calculation is something that we can uh, uh, mention an expert fund managers and key pension okay those are the pointers that you guys have mentioned that is interesting adverse economic condition investment return lower than expected lighter mortality higher expenses changes in valuation basis so kavya your points are very very good uh, both without saying uh, investment return contribution all of these are nice shri priya concentration on this utsav so uh, let me just read through and uh, these pointers look super amazing to me uh, mortality or attrition is lower than expected that is more employees are reaching the retirement age salary increase is higher than expect- expected as a result of it i think approval of benefit has stopped uh, but still it might have been uh, uh, it it could have probably impacted to certain extent because uh, the multiplier still probably could remain upon uh, their end salary so salary increase could have been higher than expected return on assets is lower which means uh, investments are not uh, yielding the sort of returns that we expected investment losses due to default on investments retirees survive uh more than expected this is again a very good point discretionary pension increase to retirees more than expected lower contribution made leading to lower funding position uh yeah so uh you wanted to bridge the gap but you're not bridging it in the way that you expected it to uh, as a result of which the funding position could end up getting worse more employees while more employees while retiring choose higher costing options such as uh commutation okay yeah, i mean uh, in in a lot of uh, cases uh, they may end up choosing a commute option so if they are commuting it right at the point of retirement the entire amount gets uh, credited immediately so as a result of which the outflow may have been worse than expected and uh, this could this could lead to potentially uh, worsening of, of of the experience there could be lower commutation as well which could lead to this depends upon how you are uh, commuting uh, the entire pension joint and survivor assumptions uh, used so on top of that there, there was one reason why specifically mentioned that one of the or at least half of the answer uh, could have been done well over here uh, that is because of the fact that you know whenever there is a mismatch or you know worsening of experience wala question you can directly remember that equation wala thing that we mentioned right so whenever losses ka baat karte to kya hota hai when there you have Uh, all the incomes related item and then whatever is uh, leading to that outflow right all the you guys have mentioned those points uh, but those pointers could have directly been bifurcated into uh, major items so the mortality morbidity experience could be worse uh, the inflation may be uh, 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 worse off as a res- as, as a result of which uh, uh, if, if there is a fall in the inflation uh, you may end up finding that the valuation basis lead to a higher amount if there is an increase in inflation the amount that you end up paying out to people would be bad so inflation could be worse than expected uh, worse than expected uh, expenses could be higher uh, joint schemes can be higher just like utsav had mentioned uh, more more members may be you know exercising an option of early retirement because of uh, better terms there could be more people who are leaving the scheme because of better terms uh, all those items so basically uh, and an investment of course so whenever we are thinking about it right if if you remember we discussed it whenever a question like this comes uh insurance ke liye we had, uh, we had that discussion that uh, uh premium is equal to your total uh claim outflow plus expenses minus investment return and all of those 
and within that even if you and similar if not the same equation can be thought of over here as well so then if you are doing it the expenses ke bare mein aap assumption bana sakte ho do teen you can think about the investment you can think about worse of mortality experience you can think about better or or sorry worse claim experience because of the people uh choosing to move out or people retiring early or people choosing to commute or not commute as much as we had expected those reasons will give you direct uh, direct kind of uh, pointers on how to uh, tackle this question so agar aap khali equation ke bare mein socho and if you if you're just talking about expense investment inflation all of these items you should be able to do 5 to 6 mark ka good enough uh, heavy lifting on top of that the incremental points would be what uh, utsav has uh, has mentioned over here so that that includes you know retiree surviving more discretionary benefit being higher uh, more employees choosing commutation or non commutation option uh, joint wala ho sakta hai uh, in in this case it is possible that you are giving a uh, joint what do you call it this thing uh, pension which means even at the uh, death of the recipient the spouse would continue to remain uh, continue to get benefits so how that particular uh, thing gets uh, get, uh, turns out is going to be important uh the people may be the survivorship of the people might be far better off than what they earlier anticipated the assumptions that you are using also ends up determining what you are doing and of course one of the pointers that almost all of you covered was the valuation basis so the way in which you are valuing is of course going to be super critical in in in, in identification of this if you are valuing it on more and more stricter basis you end up finding that uh, there could be a deviation and last point which can be mentioned over here is an error there is a possibility that there could be an error in the way that you are calculating right so it is possible that over the last couple of years things have actually improved but because of an error in or judgment or 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 whatever you are making in that calculation as a result of that erroneous calculation you may end up finding that the experience is worse while in reality it is not so with that if you think of it you have generated good enough points on the equation bit of it expense claims uh, inflation investment returns mortality morbidity all of those ideas will at least uh, end up fetching you 6 7 good pointers on top of that there will be specific pointers on how uh, things might move with respect to a pension uh, which may lead to a uh, worsening in case of a db scheme higher accruals commutations and all of those so those are pension specific pointers uh, joint policies and all of that and towards the end of course there is data related thing that what is the assumption that you are using to uh, do it and there could be an error as well so if you just bifurcate there are three broader items over here within three it is possible to make like five six good pointers so approaching the question using such mental models you end up finding that no, it's not just that you know the structure of the answer would be better off because ideally you should not start this uh, type of a question saying that the valuation basis could be wrong or uh, there could be a error in the calculation of course that is a pointer and very important pointer but it should come at the end so how you are structuring it is again going to be uh, super important in uh, questions like this so when you are thinking through the lens of or when you are bifurcating into broader heads you end up finding that the pointers are much more uh, relatable so someone reading point 1 can relate to point 2 and then point 3 it's not like uh, randomly that first of all you are mentioning about inflation then you are talking about errors then you are talking about uh, commutation and then you are talking about assumptions uh, although i don't think uh, i mean it, it it is something that can be done but you'll be better off doing uh in the way that you know uh, in in the structure that you guys have already done it so yeah that's that's what i wanted to discuss next up uh, discuss the potential options available to improve the funding position <coughs> of the db scheme it, it is an i mean this seems quite interesting it will be exact opposite of whatever we have discussed so far right so humne kya kya bola tha ki investment strategy could be worse off uh, than what we had anticipated the returns that they are generating may not be adequate so they can change the investment strategy they can do a better match in terms of assets and liability if there is any sort of uh, mismatch in alm they could probably take care of that uh, in order to make sure that you know the worsening does not happen uh, going forward uh, they can fund it using uh, better investment uh, classes if, if at all they have made permanent investment losses uh, and write offs they could use the funds in order to invest in more uh, safer assets like government securities and all which have wherein you also meet the tenure so 10 year or 20 year government bond will uh, be a better match to you so वैसे करके अगर आप investment कर रहे हो तो that will be one of the areas right so 
Oh, okay, sorry. It was the WhatsApp. Just a second. Yeah. Uh, perfect. Yeah. So, who gave up investment related pointers? Then, uh, benefits mein jo apne approval and all ka baare mein bola tha, you can uh, uh, mention how you can change that. Uh, on top of that, in order to uh, improve the funding position, the biggest item here would be to uh, fill in the deficit, right? So, there's a certain deficit that has uh, uh, come up over the past few years in order to make sure that that does not remain in the future. You'll have to fix that and you'll have to provide contribution. So maybe you can, instead of fixing it or filling it uh, in 10 years or 5 years over here has been provided, you can try and do it in a quicker way because the faster that you do, the better of you're going to be because deficit ke se losses uh, incremental are there. Enge. So even so if you were to do it immediately, let's just say not immediately or in the next couple of years, you end up finding that asset liability matching can be done in a better way. And the write-offs on assets and everything which is happening historically uh, would end up being lower and you'll be better off. So here, all the actions, all the pointers you generate over here is going to be directly related to this. Because that is like you you first mentioned the problems and then you mentioned the solutions is, is what this question is structured at. So all of those pointers that you already mentioned, you have to provide solutions to them. Then the last of the bit, the, then the last bit of it, which is like assumption, right? You can use a better valuation base. If in case the valuation base was super strict, you can go to a relatively lenient one. And uh, uh, using that change in the valuation base, you may end up making a uh, benefit or a profit. Uh, then, you know, you can en uh, end up mentioning those general pointers in terms of what we have done specifically for pensions. And finally, if error a calculation, mein, you can check that as well. Although I'm not sure potential option to improve the funding position. Haan, you recalculate and see if there's any error. If at all there are any errors as a result of which your funding position has gone up, of course, that can be fixed immediately. You just have to fix the model. So that's that. So this again is a interesting one. Depends uh, mostly on this, uh, but the structure to this, if you are able to structure it well, you end up finding that you know uh, this entire 18 marks here you can uh, do exceptionally well uh, if you're if, if only you're structuring it well. So this five marks and this 18 marks were de were decent enough. This is again kind of a bookwork, but difficult to crack. At least at the first go, I wasn't able to crack it. Then when I, uh, you know, read through the control and everything, it ended up coming uh, nat more naturally to me. So overall, the questions so far have been decent enough. A lot of things can be touched upon and taken directly from the book. A lot of things can be taken from the logical uh, way that we encounter these sort of questions. Uh, so overall, so far, so good is what I'd say. Next, let's just look at the last question. Discuss the key risk of the defined uh, contribution scheme. In your answer, you should comment on each risk from the perspective of XYZ and the scheme members. So, I mean, given that this is a very straightforward, probably a, one of the best book work kind of a question that you, that you have probably seen. Uh, so, no point spending a lot of time on this one. Uh, you, can, you can basically come up with what are the advantage, disadvantage uh, of, of uh, uh, the DC scheme from the perspective of the lens of both of the people. So, I think that should be fairly uh, straightforward question for you. Uh, this is going to end your book work related everything. So we had completed the booklet uh, three days back. We've looked at uh, three, four different questions uh, from part B as well. Uh, in, in, in Sorry, paper two as well, wherein uh, case study based questions come. Um, you've seen that, you know, there are different uh, types of case study. The one we encountered yesterday was probably a, a little more difficult or trickier to understand or comprehend. Uh, but yeah, the idea continues to remain that you should be prepared for the worst, uh, but of course, hope, hope for the best. So with that, I'm, I'm kind of ending, uh, the book work. Of course, the revisions, uh, are, are ongoing with flashcards, uh, which should help you guys get a good sense or hang of what's, what's there in the entire syllabus. If you just go through it once again, and you end up finding that, you know, the next time that you do it, it's, it's going to be much more quicker than, uh, the last time. So yeah, with that, I'm just wrapping up the entire session. If there are any questions at all from anywhere or any general question, I'd be happy to address over the next five minutes. Uh, otherwise, yeah, we can we can call it a day. And uh, yeah, all the best. Uh, I mean, it's too early to give you all the best, but given that we've kind of completed the syllabus, uh, I, I have to do that, right? So yeah, do let me know if there are any questions at all in terms of CP1, paper one, paper two, general questions uh, that you guys may have or uh, 
of course we can connect one on one later on as well in order to address any question that you may have and of course if if not we can we can call it a day and uh, you guys can uh, just uh, maybe you know no questions thank you sir chalo thanks uh, shri priya thanks kavya thanks nivavri uh, thanks a lot uh, for joining in uh, yeah and of course again reiterating but yeah wish you guys all the best and any questions do make sure that you are coming uh, to me uh, i'll i'll try and address it to the best of my understanding even if i'm not i'll try and get back to you later on if if if, if at all even i don't know the uh, answer to that immediately so yeah with that uh, would wrap up this and uh, chalo thanks and all the best guys see you